today I will start this uh, seismic analysis and design of buildings discussion and I will be using IBC 2021 for this whole demonstration which is now the BCP 2021 also uh, with uh, necessary modifications and obviously, this uh, you will see in IBC 2021 that it will be referring again and again to ASC 7 16. So, which means that IBC alone is not self contained several of the provisions in IBC are referring to ASC 7. So, actually we, we use both ASC 7 and ASC 7 16 is the latest ASC 7. Uh, now, we also have 7 22, uh, but I will be using 7 16 and then IBC 2021. So, obviously, uh, all that discussion is applicable to building code of Pakistan also because they are now same. So, I will be highlighting some of the differences also. Obviously, the hazard parameters we will be taking from BCP and all other things also, but the science of structural analysis and design is same. right? Only the numbers are replaced with Pakistan specific numbers where required. So, IBC 2021 is now BCP 2021 with necessary modifications and this is ASC 7 16. Uh, obviously, as I have said that now 22 is also available and in that there are uh, several modifications in the seismic analysis and design chapters, but I will be focusing on only this one 7 16. ASC 7 16 is not a comprehensive building code actually. It prescribes the minimum design loads and other associated criteria for buildings and other structures. So, it is primarily referred to pick the design loads and seismic load is one of those loads. Similarly, wind loads, tsunami loads, flood loads, snow loads, rain loads. So, it has chapters for different types of loads and it, it explains the science of how we can calculate those loads for a particular real structure. So, we start with IBC, we start designing it or start analyzing it, but in order to calculate the design loads, we have to come to ASC 7 16 right? and it also prescribes the load combinations. So, everything about loads will be covered in ASC 7. So, IBC 2021 selectively takes things from ASC 7, but it is not uh, self contained. Sometimes it refers to ASC 7 for more detail. You will see in the in the seismic analysis chapter that some information it takes from ASC 7, but for others it just refers. So, IBC is a comprehensive building code. It covers all the aspects of uh, structural analysis and design actually in the context of buildings, right? but for specific aspects of building design you may also refer to other compatible codes. For example, for concrete design IC, uh, IBC 2021 refers to ACI 318. Right? Similarly, for steel design uh, it refers to ASC uh, refer, uh, documents or reference documents for steel design AISC. Right? So, sometimes IBC modifies certain, uh, certain provisions of uh, particular reference code. So, for ACI 318 in, in the relevant concrete design chapter in IBC you will see that it says that you should follow ACI 318 with these modifications because those modifications will make ACI 318 compatible with IBC. right? So, it will highlight some of the modifications otherwise it says that you just follow ACI 318. Same is for steel and same is for pre stressed uh, design of pre stressed elements. So, you may not cover all aspects of structural design for different types of buildings in one document. So, you start with IBC but then you go to other documents which are referenced by IBC. The most common is this one for load calculation it is uh, 7-16. So, um, but it refers to other documents also for example, for timber design 
for uh, steel, steel design or glass design, aluminum design. It refers to specialized documents, mostly ASCE documents, right? So, ASCE documents and IBC they are compatible. They are they can be considered the same family of building codes. So, today my plan is to explain the step by step procedure which is prescribed in IBC 2021 and as a result it is also prescribed in uh, BCP 2021, uh, which is common to all seismic analysis procedures. Right? So, I wanted to explain that uh, step by step procedure which is common to all seismic analysis types including equivalent lateral force procedure response spectrum analysis and the time history analysis. So, prior to the application of any seismic analysis procedure you have to pass through these steps for any particular given building. right? So, I summarize that, that uh, task into 8 steps. You have to first uh, pass through these things and finally, you come to know that you should apply this analysis procedure. Then we go to the details of those seismic analysis procedures. Now, let us see uh, the step by step seismic analysis and design procedure using IBC 2021, BCP 2021 and ASC 7-16. So, I will be referring again and again. So, I will give you an overview of uh, some basic steps which are common to all seismic analysis procedures. You require some basic input information about your new building and that may be the configuration or geometry of building. Obviously, architect will provide that uh, for you. Initial cross sectional sizes and material properties, intended use of the building, you should know that. The site class and the load resisting systems for gravity load resisting system and for lateral load resisting system. So, prior to any analysis, uh, the conception part of the building should be should be there and you should know all of this basic input information. You should be clear about how the gravity load will be transferring to your foundations, how the lateral load will be transferring to your foundation. So, everything about load path. In gravity load resisting systems, you should know that whether it is a flat plate or a flat slab or it is a conventional beam column frame system you should know that gravity load systems also. For lateral load resisting system, you should know how the lateral load will transfer ultimately to foundation, whether it is a moment resisting frame or it is a moment resisting frame plus shear wall or braced frame for example or any other. There is a detailed list of lateral load resisting systems. So, this is a list of information which you should have even before starting the seismic design process. right? Now, come to step 1. IBC 2021 requires you to establish the risk category of your building first, because all other steps later will be uh, based on your risk category. right? There used to be an occupancy category before, uh, but now uh, this IBC 2021 specifically talk, uh, talks about risk category which you should be establishing right at the start of that, that process. right? That is based on the intended use of the building or occupancy and uh, you should refer to table 1.5-1 in ASC 7-16. So, now you will go to ASC 7-16 chapter 1 and this specific table and based on the intended use of your building you should first assign a risk category to your building. right? So, the one of the major differ differences between UBC 97 and IBC and by the way BCP 2007 and BCP 2021 resultingly is this concept that now seismic zones are no more used and we use the seismic design categories. right? and those seismic design categories we will see later that they depend on risk category. right? So, no more seismic zones. Instead, we will be using now seismic design categories SDCs and the risk categories. So, now let me go to this particular table to explain 
how you will be actually establishing the risk category of your building. So, now it is it is a, a number which is assigned to your building and not your site right. So, it is assigned to your building. So, on the same site you may have a bit two, two buildings with two different risk categories. So, let me open now this ASE 7 dash 16 and this particular table 1.5 dash 1. So, this is that table 1.5 dash 1 that depending upon the occupancy of your structure you either assign it as the risk category 1, 2, 3 and then 4 right this one. So, for example, buildings and other structures that represent low risk to human life like a warehouse right. So, no one is living there, its collapse may not pose a significant threat to human life, you can assign it a risk category 1 right. And then the whole seismic design procedure or applicability of different provisions will be different for this one. If you assign it number 2 for example, you will be on a different line right. So, this is first step. Uh, then uh, this one obviously will, will be for all other buildings other than 1, 3 and 4. So, actually we have to first check 1, 3 and 4 and if uh, we are not lying in any of 1, 3 and 4 then we go to 2 right. 3 is uh, building and other structures the failure of which could pose a substantial risk to human life. So, there is an explanation for that also. Then 4 also buildings and other structure designated as essential facilities. Essential facilities includes schools, hospitals and then lifelines all those facilities should be given risk category 4. If you are not in 1, 3 and 4 then give 2 right. So, this is the first step and it is the function of your occupancy right risk category. This concept will be used not only in the seismic analysis, this is a general concept. If a building have a risk category 4, it will be designed for uh, some more strict wind loadings and its criteria for earthquake loading or earthquake analysis will also be more strict right. So, it is for flood, wind, snow, earthquake and ice load. All those uh, load calculation science will refer to risk category again and again right. So, this is the first step. Then in context of uh, seismic analysis, we will determine the ground motion parameters SS and S1 for our site. Now, these are the numbers which are not dependent on our, our building, they are dependent on our site right. Short period spectral acceleration and uh, long period spectral acceleration at 1 second. So, the process will be like this that uh, you must have the hazard maps for your your study area or actually your site from which you will be picking this S S and S 1 and they are by default defined at M C E level, uh, but in 2009 or 10 actually A C 7, 10 and then I B C 2012 onwards, we have a slight slightly different definition for S S and S 1. In I B C 20 uh, 2003, 6 and 9, uh, they were actually defined as simple MCE level numbers, MCE which means 2 percent probability of exceedance in 50 years right. Currently, we have a more sophisticated definitions of SS and S1, a modified SS and S1, they are still MCE level, they are still corresponding to this main definition but on top of that they are modified for another factor and that is this risk targeting. The idea is uh, obviously, I will I may not be able to go into detail that how we actually get that modification, uh, but the idea is that if for example, uh, you have two different areas with some S S and S 1 values. Uh, Let us say their values are exactly same two different areas one area have a very good quality of existing structures, there that the vulnerability there is already very low and the other the vulnerability is high right. 
So, obviously, the, the existing vulnerability should be accounted in the design of new buildings such that they should be allowed to design on slightly lower S S and S 1. So, buildings which are already good quality, they may not be designed on exactly the S S and S 1, they may be allowed to design for a slightly lower number. Similarly, the other area which have a very high vulnerability, their design S S and S 1 should be slightly higher. So, based on the quality of buildings at a particular point in the study area, we may modify the S S and S 1 and the idea for modification is such that the, the risk of collapse uh, is defined and then that risk of collapse can be made uh, equal for both cities. So, let me give you an example, this is city A and this is city B. right? We know that risk is equal to vulnerability into hazard. right? Now, hazard is let us say same for both cases, but vulnerability is significantly different. right? So, we have uh, let us say very high vulnerability for city A and we have very low vulnerability in city B. right? And let us say hazard is same, the probability of occurrence of potentially destructive earthquake in future is same for both cities. But one city have a very good quality buildings, their vulnerability is, is very low city B and other have a very high. right? In order the idea is that let us not equate their hazards, let us equate their seismic risks and account the vulnerability effect in them. So, the target risk was set as 1 percent probability of collapse in next 50 years this is the target risk, this was the definition of target risk in this new definition of S S and S 1. They say that the design hazard should be modified such that the buildings in both cities should have 1 percent probability of collapse in next 50 years. So, they say that this number can be fixed risk and based on vulnerability, let us increase or decrease hazard such that we get the same risk in both cities. right? And based on this idea, they calculated the modification factors. It is called risk factor by the way. So, the S S and S 1, the original M C E level S S and S 1, they were modified for this risk factor also. So, if the vulnerability of an area is uh, very high, uh, the, num the risk factor will be more than 1. So, the building should be designed for slightly higher hazard than what is original S S and S 1. So, and obviously opposite. So, they fix they fix this risk to this definition and modify hazard such that the they reach to the target risk a fixed target risk. So, those modified S S and S 1 are now called as the M C E R or risk targeted maximum considered earthquake. Right? So, there is a detailed process of how we can risk target our original S S and S 1, uh, original M C level S S and S 1. So, from 2012 onwards in I B C, all the default uh, hazard maps of S S and S 1, they are M C level, but at the same time they are modified already for the target risk. So, they are M C E R maps, not M C E maps. Unfortunately, we were not able to develop M C E R maps for Pakistan. So, in a building code of Pakistan 2021, uh, we, we have this original M C E 2 percent probability of exceedance in 50 years S S and S 1 maps. right? So, the risk coefficient depending upon the building quality at each pixel is not applied in our maps. right? So, in strict terms, our hazard map is exactly uh, not exactly compatible with the risk ha the, the hazard definition of IBC 2021. Right? The main issue is that uh, if you want to calculate the risk coefficient for each point in your study area, you have to quantify the vulnerability of each point in the study area. 
which means you require information about the quality of buildings at each point in your study area which obviously is not that easy to get in our local context right so we are still working on it by the way and uh, i have uh, people on this issue which may find some way to risk target our values right so maybe in the next version or in uh, maybe next some time we will be successful in developing the risk targeted hazard map for pakistan so for us obviously the risk targeted ss and s1 maps are there in ibc 2021 uh, actually they are in asc 7-16 for ss they have this series of maps for s1 they have this series and uh, once you get it for your particular study area let me open actually the building code of pakistan to show you the ss and s1 maps so let me first go to actually asc 7-16 to show you us hazard maps their definition and then i go to uh, to building code of pakistan so for uh, for us hazard maps it is in chapter 22 so this is chapter 22 seismic ground motion long period transition and risk coefficient maps so this is that risk coefficient right so this is a modifier uh, on the actual mce level ss and s1 to make it mcer risk targeted mc right so for example this is one hazard map it is a contour map telling you the number of ss i think let me go down and check it it will be ss as a percentage of g so 70 means 0.7 g right so uh, let's check this uh, caption these are obviously developed by usgs in collaboration with fema and then they are uh, all the information is there actually they are ss maps spectral acceleration for 0.2 second they are by default for 5% damping and these are the modifications made uh, these maps incorporate a target risk of structural collapse equal to 1% in 50 years based upon a generic structural fragility right so based on the generic fragility uh, they are modified to to get this target risk and risk that target risk is set constant which is equal to 1% in 50 years so now it is possible that two buildings are designed on different ss and s1 and they have the same target risk they have the same risk of collapse 1% in next 50 years right so based on this idea they modified and it also incorporates another factor of 1.1 dep uh, it is uh, for the adjustment from a geometric mean to maximum response previously because earthquake have two components so previous exercise was that uh, uh, we can have uh, the geometric mean uh, and now the concept is that we go for the maximum of uh, maximum direction and that is accounted implicitly using a factor of 1.1 similarly in s1 map there is a factor of i think 1.3 to account for this effect and similarly there is a deterministic upper limit also so when you make a, a mcer map you also have to perform dsha because that also serves as cap in some of the areas which are closer to the faults for example so that modification is is also there so ultimately this map tells you the ss value modified ss value you can say mcr ss value so you can pick the number here similarly all these maps for different regions of us there is a detailed list and then there is a detailed list for s1 maps also now if i go to the building code of pakistan the chapter 16 of ibc uh, is about the structural design right so we actually kept the same chapter numbers the same even the same provision numbers so if something is deleted we we didn't actually change the the order right so we
kept it such that any modification will not modify the provision number even right so if some whole chapter is deleted we just still keep it as just one page so that the ordering is not disturbed so you can have a direct relation between ibc 2021 and bcp 2021 the provision number chapter number table number everything will be same right so actually we should focus directly on in those areas which are modified right so i go now to chapter 16 because i already know that chapter 16 is the ibc chapter for structural design and in that all the loads are discussed so i go to 16 directly yes this one and this one talks about different types of loads which should, you should consider in the structural design and it talks about dead load live load and all other so let me directly go to earthquake loads and that particular section should contain the ss and s1 map for pakistan yeah this one so we have uh, this uh, ss map this is the mc level 2475 year return period the original mc level not modified according according to the actual hazard definition of ibc 2021 and you can see these color ranges uh, showing different ss values right so a table for different uh, cities major cities is added as an appendix in this document right so you will be picking your ss and s1 either from this map or the accompanying accompanying table right in making that table uh, you should uh, consider this idea that we had the values at very fine resolution so even within one particular city we had many values right so there may be a variation within a city but we just propose a representative number for each city right so i think more than 300 cities that detailed table had and you can use that as part of this map right uh, one more consideration here is that now you have a different number for each city previously you had zone 2b let's say and let's say 30% of the country was in zone 2b all the cities in zone 2b will have the same z factor and will have the same base shear for the same building type right so if you keep everything same your hazard is same effectively but that zone was made let's say 2b was made for a particular range of pga you were not using that actual pga number for your city you were using zone 2b corresponding to z equal to 0.2 let's say right now in this case you have a different number for different cities so there is a lot of discussion going on that uh, the base shear for a particular city is now changed or the spectrum is changed so please keep that point in mind also that previously when you say that uh, the pga value 0.24 to 0.28 is one zone it may be possible that in that zone some city may have 0.24 some city may have 0.28 if you were able to use the actual pga value for a particular for each city you would have get a different base shear but in in the ubc approach you were simply using a z factor and z factor make practically all those two cities same for 0.24g and for 0.28g this is not the case here here you have a different number ss and s1 for each city so if previously a, a, a city was in zone 2b it may be possible that the actual ss and s1 for uh, that particular city is lower than what the upper limit of zone 2b is right so it may be possible that you get uh, some variations 30 40% also we have seen we have carried out a pilot study to check the implications of this new hazard map in different cities and we found uh, a lot of variations sometimes our new number is higher than that zone based uh, base shear elf and sometimes it is lower than that previous number right 
So, uh, this difference in the basic idea should be kept in mind always, right. Similarly, you have a map for S 1 and uh, these are the ranges which we just made for the purpose of plotting this map. Obviously, you will be using a real number from the table, right. And uh, then again that thing that within one particular city the number may vary, the table may not be very accurate, right. Uh, especially in the areas which are in the vicinity of active crustal faults, where the seismicity pattern changes abruptly, right. So, for example, check Quetta. It is at the edge of a particular range, right. See, you can see two colors are almost meeting at Quetta. So, the actual number uh, may be sensitive to which location in Quetta you are actually having that analysis. So, hopefully, when in near future I will make that uh, web app, in that obviously, you will be having a different number at each pixel. So, you may have a different number within Islamabad or within Quetta for example, right. So, this is how you will be picking your S S and S 1. Currently, in this particular PDF file, I do not have that table but uh, it is added as an appendix in the final copy. Then obviously, when you pick that this S and S 1 is for bedrock level, it is not modified for the local soil, right. So, you have to now modify it and the easy option is that you use code coefficients. So, select site coefficients for S S it is called F A, uh, for S 1 it is called F V these two coefficients should be selected and uh, then they should be multiplied with the uh, S S and S 1 respectively to get S M S and S M 1. Now, these are the adjusted hazard parameters adjusted for the local soil, right. So, quickly see these two tables which are already adopted in the building code of Pakistan also. So, either I show you the IBC 2021 or ASE 716 or BCP 2021 it is same. So, let me just directly show you this one. This is the table for uh, F A, same table number I think will be for IBC 2021 also. So, using your S S value and your site class, you pick a number which is modifier. Now, for stiffer soils A and B, the number for different S S is less than 1. So, these two soils are going to de-amplify your ground shaking they are beneficial, but obviously C, D, E will be having numbers more than 1. So, even let us say see this one 2.4 for S S less than 0.25. So, this modifier is not only the function of your quality of soil, but also the function of the level of seismicity, right. So, based on your S S and your site class you pick that number. and um, if your value is in between you go for linear interpolation, straight line interpolation and for this note B, uh, this is uh, the guideline obviously, it will be saying that go for the site specific. If your site is E, uh, uh, site class is E already very loose soil and your seismicity is also very high, go for site specific, right. Do not pick just number from here, go for the detailed analysis. For site class F, whether your seismicity is low or high, go for site specific, right. Similarly, F V, it depends on S 1, right. So, one modifier for S S, one modifier for, uh, for S 1. Depending upon your S 1 value, uh, you pick this number, it can be even this 3.3 .3 also, I mean it can be. So, the site, the site can amplify your ground motion three times also, four times also, right. The actual ground response analysis sometimes give you the amplification like four or five times also, right. If you have specific um, case with very loose soil. So, you get S M S and S M 1 by multiplying these modifiers. These are the, the modified S S and S 1, right.
So, now within step 3, the last thing we have to do is this thing that these values which are M C level values, we have to bring down to design level values. right? So, the code propose a modifier of uh, 0 0.66 or 2 by 3 to bring down the M C level values to the design level values. right? So, this number uh, 2 by 3 uh, was uh, originally developed for California, but later uh, I mean this was the ratio between the des design level and M C level, uh, but then they later it was uh, adopted for all the other locations also. So, currently the design level is defined as 2 by 3 of the M C level. right? So, the ratio between uh, uh, M C level and D B level is 1.5 or d b level to m c level is 0 0.66 or 2 by 3. right? So, you multiply s m s with 2 by 3 to get s d s and s m 1 you multiply with 2 by 3 to get s d 1. From now onwards, you only know s d s and s d 1. right? These are your two design level hazard parameters, which are already modified by for the local soil also. right? So, from now onwards, the hazard numbers will be S T S and S T 1. Uh, the code equation for the spectrum actually depends on S D S and S T 1. When I say S S and S 1, I mean the modified values, right? Uh, reduced values and modified for the local soil. Similarly, in the E L F method, the determination of empirical base shear is the function of S D S and S T 1, not directly S S and S 1, right? But derived from those as S S and S 1. 